Yo guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of the FM Save, it's episode number 22 and today we are probably returning with the penultimate episode of season 3 as we face Aston Villa away and Brentford away where really I feel as though we're probably already safe. Before we get to the games though, shall I follow me getting on off camera? So of course in the last episode you saw the manic transfer deadline day, absolutely wild where we missed out on our main target and didn't sell Robinson until afterwards but did receive a club record fee for his services. Eight games in a run off camera on the back of the 2-1 victory at Turf Moor and as you can see the run has been poor but because we picked up a couple of wins in the eight games the six defeats are sort of counted out by that I think we're safe now. So we began with one victory against Crystal Palace, uh, Patrick Bamford scoring the only goal of the game in this one connecting with a Lewis Cook through ball in a 1-0 victory and following that four straight losses and only two goals scored and a lot of goals conceded. Uh, beginning with a 3-0 loss away at the King Power against Leicester City, Wilfred and Didi scored the first of the game, cracking assist for the goal as well. Uh, Benedetti made it 2-0 and then later on they get their third in a game where we didn't really do anything at all and another 3-0 loss followed uh, home to Arsenal in this one. Uh, Zayek from the spot, 34 minutes in. Tierney right after the break scored an absolute screamer as well. What a goal from the left back and uh, Thomas Rapp to the points late on in that one in a comfortable victory for Arsenal. Following that, another defeat, another game where we failed to score. 2 0 at home to Spurs. Rovella scoring the first one 39 minutes in, then about 90 minutes after the restart, turning provider. His corner headed in by Eric Dyer at the back stick in a 2 0 loss in our London derby. And after that, I thought this was going to be the game where we'd return to winning ways or at least get a point, but. How many times have Fulham done this? Thrown away points from leading positions. We scored two goals in the first 10 minutes. First a howler from Radu, giving Jerome, I believe, his first goal for the club, making it 1-0. Then knockout convert over Walker Peters Cross made it 2-0. But directly afterwards, we just capitulated. Mason Holgate makes it 2-1. Five minutes later, Moyes Keane. I've got to start charging this guy rent, man. He lives in our six-yard area. Made it 2-2. And then after the restart, Richard Lisa made it 3-2 at the top. He's completed the turnaround. And then Keane bagged his brace right towards the end a 4-2 loss and falling out the loss streak continued fifth straight game without a point so no points picked up from a possible 15 and only one game where we failed to, uh, one game where we managed to score didn't score in this one Bernardo Silva scoring the only goal of the game in a home defeat to Manchester City didn't defend too badly but they took the only chance they got but thank the lord in the following game we did return with a much needed win at home to Brighton uh, Patrick Bamford scoring a first goal of the game, our top scorer making it 1-0, 22 minutes in. Ivan Caballero bagged our second five minutes after the restart. And whilst Brighton did get a consolation goal, that's all it proved to be as we got a much needed return to winning ways there. But following that, a familiar feeling, back to losing ways, 3-0 away at the Etihad Stadium to Manchester City. Lautaro Martinez bagging a brace and Phil Foden got one as well, but really, I wasn't concerned about the fact we lost the game, but the, the two goals we conceded in the first half the second in particular, I do not know what was going on there. But seriously, it is just schoolboy stuff. Absolutely shocking in a 3-0 loss, but I didn't think we'd get anything. Anyway, so yeah, really poor run of form. Just six points picked up from a possible 24. However, due to the fact we have won three of our last nine... We're okay. Like we're in 12th place right now, so we haven't slid down the table that much. Yes, the form has been woeful, but again, we're 16 points off Brentford in 18th place right now. And again, with nine games to go, a game in hand on quite a few teams as well. I think we're fine. Because of the way we started the season off, which was really, really impressive... This slide down the table and then going into the bottom half doesn't concern me at all. Because we had that fantastic start in the first 9 to 10 weeks of the season, I'm I'm okay. The points we picked up in the first half of the season have meant that our second half of the season struggles haven't been too bad. Because, again, I, I, I think we're safe. I think we've already done it. The past two seasons, 35 points has been all you've needed to survive. The uh, highest point total a relegated team has had is 34, so I already think it's done. Uh, by the way, for the first game of uh, today's episode, I just want to show you this real briefly. We've had a youth intake. You get one every single season. As I always say, don't get too excited. Uh, a couple of players could be all right in the future, I suppose. Alex Owusu uh, looks okay as a possible inside forward slash striker. And also uh, Nathan Armstrong, who is a winger as well, could be all right in the future. Two. No standouts though, we're still waiting for that first proper standout from a youth intake. 
Haven't had one so far in the save, but I rarely ever get them anyway, so not too surprising indeed. So nothing else to show you really, uh, nothing's been going on behind the scenes financially, we're still as healthy as a horse. So because of that, let's just dive into the first game of today's episode, Aston Villa away, and again, I, I think we're already safe now really. One win in our final nine is what we'd need really to basically mathematically confirm it. So in the runoff game, we have had a few injuries as well, uh, a couple of players are returning from their injuries though, uh, including Zambo, who's just got back after a serious injury, but he won't play the first game, Target. <laughs> I mean, he came in injured, so I can't be too surprised. But I swear, after like the first couple of days after shaking off the injury, he got another one. He's had, he's, he's had two injuries since joining us here after coming in injured. Typical. But he won't play today either. And Lewis Ferguson, as we know, is still down with that torn calf muscle. I don't think we'll see him again for the rest of this season. So this is our team. 4-2-3-1. Rodak and Gilbert. For if Kyle Walker-Peters nailing down the first choice left-back spot now in the back of the uh, sale of Robinson. Tosin, Jerome and Roberts will kick and gag Aldini through the middle. Caballero and Knock out the inside forwards with Kenny Sport and Bamford out top. On the bench, Darlow, Mings, Brian, and Panzu, Reed, Babangida, and Bobby Reed as well. First two, it's Aston Villa. I think two draws or one win, and we're basically mathematically safe. Come on, Fulham. Maybe I am tempting fate by saying I think we're almost safe. But again, when you look at the bottom three right now, well, I would have shown you the bottom three. Being so many points clear, like they've they've got to win. The majority of their remaining games and we'd have to lose the majority of our remaining games which again isn't beyond the realms of possibility but is incredibly unlikely as Bamford is through and drills it in for our first just 15 minutes and again I'd definitely say one win now in our final nine is all we'll need and that's definitely doable and possibly today as well great ball by Caviero on Bamford this season you know when I signed him at the start of the season I was like oh well you know 14 million will he be worth it absolutely worth every single penny drills it in bottom corner full him in front this could be the game that mathematically confirms it actually it wouldn't be mathematically as well it would give us 38 points oh for goodness sake i want to show you the league table but we'd basically be there as we already are right now but anyway still leading by a goal great ball by douglas louise on mirin oh what a goal makes it 1-1 villa back on level terms defensively lately we've been shocking we can't stop conceding at the moment i mean we really can't it's been so, so frustrating because, again, if you remember last season, we had the sixth best defensive record in the division. I didn't make out much of that as I, as I should have done. I should have been talking about that a lot more. The sixth best defensive record in the league last year. We certainly won't have that this year as Bamford tries to squeeze one in from a tight angle and hits the post. Still 1-1. Getting a lot of balls in behind the back line from both teams at the moment. Hands on hips. We're not doing badly at all. If everyone continues to work hard, we'll win this second half to begin. Again, I definitely take the point in this game here. I think, again, like, you know, four draws in our final nine would be enough. But obviously a win would basically confirm it. Knockout's free kick. Oh, there we go. Brilliant. Lewis Cook's first goal for the club and Fulham in front. I, I tell you, he's been disappointing since we signed him. And I just don't know whether it's an advanced playmaker thing in FM. I know in this uh, game he's playing deeper and deep line playmaker. But I talked about it, I think, in the very last episode. Ad we don't need a second replay FM. Advanced playmakers, for some reason, just do basically nothing in this year's game. Never getting involved or anything. Well, we're almost there. Five minutes of stoppage time. Quickly burn the clock with that final sub there. And there it is. It's all over. 2-1, return to winning ways, two wins in our last three, and that now should all but definitely confirm up to 38 points in the division. And to be honest now, you look at the bottom three, 19 clear of Brentford, several teams below us as well with far worse goal differences. It's it's over now, we're safe. We kind of knew it already, but that game basically confirms it. We're, we're safe. So, second and final game, London Derby, and again, kind of meaningless for us, though, of course, with eight games to go, there is still a chance... And when I say there's a chance, it's a very, very slim one indeed. We could possibly keep the pressure on for a Europa Conference League slash Europa League spot. 38 points on the board with 17 points behind West Ham in that 7th place. It's incredibly unlikely, but it is still possible that I guess top 10 or 10th place, if you will, is much more realistically achievable. Though with a goal difference record we've got, highly unlikely indeed. But again, we're safe. That's the most important thing. But hopefully you do still have a pretty decent finish and similar to where we were last season in 10th place. Brentford right now struggling to stay up. And I tell you what, if they were to go down, I mean, he's not got a great goal to game ratio in the Premier League. But could the shocker do it in FM? 
I'd definitely be considering it, no doubt about it. Um, but our team heads the game, two changes to our lineup on the back of the win in the last one. One personnel and one movement. Rodax in goal, but for his Walker Peters, Adarabayo, Tosin, and uh, Connor Roberts. With Zambo coming in for Tom Kearney and playing as a box to box as Cook goes further forward and Gagliardini is our ball and midfielder. Caviero knockout once again the inside forwards with our top scorer this season, Patrick Bamford, leading the line. On the bench, Darlow, Mings, Brian Reed, Kearney, Babangida, and Bobby Reed as well. Second final game, Brentford away. We know we're safe Brentford don't more at stake for them but still come on Fulham Jerome with a long ball forward Bamford latches onto it. I'll go on oh, straight at the goalkeeper and turn behind for a corner you know I'm definitely noticing in this year's FM you know there are certain parts of the game and, and, and certain ways to play that are always more OP than others or certain things that happen a lot more than in previous FMs balls in behind in this year's FM seem incredibly common and incredibly like high defensive lines don't seem to be as effective as before when defending, but yeah, unfortunately, you could say they're still nil nil. Again, nothing really at stake for us. I, I really don't think realistically challenging for a Europa League or Europa Conference League spot is possible. And whilst I would like to finish tenth and have it once again like last year, I'm I'm fine with like eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, all the way down to like fifteenth place. So at the moment. Not really fussed what happens in our remaining games, to be honest, in the Premier League. But anyway, good chance for Brentford, and they should have taken it. And Waymo far post somehow fails to keep the header down. It's a bit of an anticlimactic end to the season, you know. There's there's so little for us to play for, and again, we're basically safe. It's one of those where it just feels like, you know, how motivated are your players to have a higher finish and a higher points total when they know there's very little at stake. Again, last season we finished 10th. That was incredible. If we can do that back to back, that would be a pretty remarkable achievement. As Patrick Bamford, what a sign in. Gets his 16th of the year. And Walker Peters, by the way, as well. Top assist maker this year. He's been a bargain buy from Wolves. I talked about it when we signed KWP. He can play right back and left back. And, you know, so we bought in Matt Target on deadline day. Got to be honest here. Oh my God, was that a rebond across to the middle as Bamford turns in? I don't think I should have even bothered signing Matt Tiger because KWP has nailed down the first choice left back role. I am training him now as a left back too. Probably shouldn't even bothered with Matt Target, really. But then anyway, 1-0, what an assist, easy finish for Bamford and leading at the break. And as things stand, going level with Everton on points in 10th place. Take this. Brentford really need to get a point in this game. Massive opportunity for them as well as Mbwemo looks to turn KWP and does. And there he is, the shocker, turning provider for the goal. But that is so unfortunate. We've conceded so many unlucky goals in this year's FM. And a slight deflection sees the ball divert past Marek Rodak and give the Bees their leveller. 19 minutes to go. Still pushing for a winner here. Still trying to make sure we get back-to-back -back wins and three in our last four as I offer Trips Cook. And they're down to 10 men as well. So right, what we'll do now is to go down to 10 men and Tony gets sacrificed. Oh, he'll be at Craven Cottage next year. I'm telling you, let's up the tempo, be more direct in our play, run at defence, be more expressive in our creative freedom and also distribute the ball quickly as well from Marek. Uh, I might make one change as well. I feel like bringing the kid on, Bab and Gida, wouldn't be against doing that because I like him a lot. Let's do it. Let's take off Anthony Knocker on the right-hand side. And I think I'm going to change those two roles around there as well. Bobby waiting on the bench. Do I make another change? Uh, no, I think I'll leave it for now. But let's up the tempo and see if we can find a winning goal. Well, we have gone for it, but we can't find a winner. But you know what? That's okay with me. You know, normally I'd say missed opportunity, but... What opportunity is there to gain? We're already safe. 1-1 one, one the final score. Brentford will take that. And I'll say unlucky boys, just wasn't our night. No need to go harsh on the players where there's basically nothing to play for now. So now 39 points on the board, 7 games to go. I'm not entirely sure we can break in to the Europa League spots. That's well too unlikely. But 10 is still possible, just like last season. But I'll take again 11th, 12th, 13th place. Realistically, we probably won't finish any lower than that. But that was this episode and the penultimate one of season three, guys. Big thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you had them, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And we might as well come back with a final day away at Old Trafford. No sense really in playing the other six games here with nothing to play for. So Manchester United away, the final day and the final episode of season three. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the season finale of our third season in the FM Save. Very soon.